Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Seth. Are you ready? Okay, last one. Ready, go. You have two. Seth has one. Annabelle has one. So Billy, you are the winner. Now, the theme this month is more or less. You can take your blindfolds off if you like. Billy, would you like the cotton candy or you could go with what's in the box? Help him out. What's he want? You're going to the box? Oh man, you're going to be so excited. Let's see what's in the box this week. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be a toy. Oh, man. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Let's go, guys. $100 of fake money. Thank you, guys, man. Congratulations. I'm going to ask you that. All right. Oh, 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 so, oh, we oh, are oh, jumping oh, in to oh, y'all oh, have a seat. Let me have your blind holes. Fill your cups away. Don't eat the herpes. Just throw it away. Yeah, you keep the cups, blindfolds, please. Thank you, Seth, for a good job, young man. All right, so we are talking about contentment. Mr. Cisco is bringing it today. Are you ready, Cisco? I'm ready, sir. He needs some intro music. Here it comes, intro music. All right, Cisco, do your thing today. Yeah, I'm going to be up here with you, but do me call me up. When you're satisfied, all right? But I'm looking for something specific. And we're talking about contentment. When you're satisfied with what you have. When you're satisfied with what you have. That's close. Annabelle? Deciding to be okay with what you have. Deciding to be okay with what you have. That's about the closest one. Corey, do you have the definition of contentment? Right there, you can share it. Deciding to be okay with Well, that's right on. I was missing the word then. All right, so listen, guys, when I was up uh, sitting with you guys uh, last week and we were teaching on this, a key word that I just I actually just popped out at was deciding. I think a lot of times that's, that's the biggest difference. It's a choice. It's a choice that we make every day. Regardless of what's going on in our life, we make a choice whether we're happy or we're not. Okay, so... As we get as we get going with this, I, I want to bring on a special guest. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a chair up here. Um, this guy has been uh, does awesome up here. Um, his name's Danny. Some people know him as Danny Downer. Uh, but we're gonna bring up Danny. We could have Debbie Downer and then bring Tiffany up here, and that's like practice all week. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, no, I meant as far as last week. You oh, were, yes, yes. Okay. remember last week you didn't, you didn't practice. Correct. So this you do need to know a little bit of what was going on. So, <laughs> so I have to get somebody that's already, and I'm gonna get away from the mic because there's a lot of noise going back. So guys, me, Mr. Danny. Hey, 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 hey. hey. What's, up? What's up? So Danny, how you been? I mean, I've been better. I thought that there were uh, blueberry muffins backstage this morning, and there weren't, so there's that. You, you're right, you're right. We did have some bagels over there, didn't we? Yeah, but bagels are hard on my teeth, so, you know, blueberry muffins would have been nice. But all right, all right. Well, let's, let's, let's move on with the interview. Um, not big on bagels here, so we're going to go move on with the interview. Are these lights bright? Nice. Well, let's, let's move on. Let's, let's talk about the interview here. So... You've been here roughly uh, a year or so. You, what, what have you been doing? Well, um, you know, I just kind of come and go, I guess. I mean, not really a whole lot. Just hang out. You, have you been to any events? I mean, there's a lot of things that go on in Carrollton and Atlanta. Yeah. Even in Jacksonville this past weekend. I mean, I don't really like, you know, I don't really like those things. I'm not a huge fan of events. Not really. But I, I thought for some reason you just uh, went to uh, one of the football games recently. 
Oh yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, it was it was okay, I guess. I mean, it just was, okay. It was loud. Loud? Yeah. Well, where, tell me. I mean, tell me a little bit more. Like when I go, I sit way at the top. Where, do you, where were you sitting? Oh, at? I was sitting in the front row. Front row? Yeah, front row. Like you were watching it live, front row, seeing the actual game. Yeah, like where that guy is right there. Like that was one of the football players. But you know, it wasn't that. It wasn't that fun. I didn't really care. No. All right. Well, let, let me ask you this. And there's. There's a lot of places to eat too. Maybe you're not into the sports scene, but maybe you like to eat. Maybe you like to get out in the, in the little city of Carrollton and you right, grab you a good bite. Have you done experienced any of that? I mean, I like restaurants, but there's just too many choices when you look at those menus. It's like, I gotta choose fries, or I gotta choose green beans. You know, it's like, why can't it just be like tater tots? Well, what about something like City Station? You know, their, their menu is, is Great, great food. Not a lot, not a lot of choices. If that's the thing that you're struggling <coughs> with, yeah. But they don't have anything I really like. So, I mean, it's okay, I guess. I don't know. All right. Well, well let me let's just keep digging, man, because I know you're busy. I know you're busy. You're always doing some cool things. What about that time when you went out to Hollywood? That was. It was fun. I mean, it was. It was okay, I guess. It wasn't like are these lights bright? It's lights. Or is it like this every Sunday? Well, what about that time when we went to uh, South Dakota or uh, Mount Rushmore? Well, that, that was fun. I mean, it was neat to see, but I probably would have chosen different presidents, you know. I'm not, I don't really agree with those, but, you know, that's neither here or there, so. But I mean, it was okay, I guess. It would be great. If I remember correctly, two or three years ago, you went to Rome? Is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, um, How was Rome? It was, I mean, it was old, you know, like. Just a lot of old people there. <laughs> so, what about the Irish? Pretty big old. What about you got the Statue of Liberty that you went to New York one year? Yeah, I liked it better when when it was copper, but now it's all green and rusted out. It just doesn't look good, you know. So, I mean, I've been a lot of places, but it's just not just not that great, you know. Guys, just give it a hand for Danny. We're gonna walk Danny out. We're going to continue. Do you see how these lights are like that? Yes, we will. Definitely will. So, guys, have you ever have you ever met somebody like that? That regardless of what's going on in their lives, how much they get to do, wherever they're at, they find something wrong about it. You know, here is Danny. He's been just sports games, restaurants, Different cities, different countries. You know, Rome had too many old people. Again, it's a choice. A lot of times, we believe with our circumstances that we can, we're going to be happy. But it's still a choice that we have to make. It's still a choice that we have to make. So, a lot of this, when when you start thinking about that, I, I want to start thinking about what happened in in, in the book of the Bible in Exodus. Okay, you ever remember Abraham? Yes. Sir. Abraham was. God made him a promise. What was God's promise to Abraham? Anybody help me? What was God's promise to Abraham? Think about before he had Isaac. He was like 99. What was his promise? What was his son that he was going to what? No, no, that his wife was And then what? What else? That he was going to... Anybody? Levi's got it. This man right here. All right, Levi, you got it? Stars and sands and everything, right? So he was gonna really? Really? just multiply, and that started happening, right? It took a while, and, and I think that's a cool thing to, to notice that at the very beginning, it wasn't like he talked to him, and then the next day he just started having babies. It happened a long time after that. So he thought his promise mm -hmm. that God had promised was gonna come true. God makes a promise and keeps it, and it began to happen. So the people of Israel began to multiply, and they lived in Egypt. <laughs> And as they were multiplying, there was another thing going on. There was a, a leader in that area that there was known as the or big old Pharaoh, right? The Pharaoh. You remember the Pharaoh? The Pharaoh started getting become, becoming somewhat jealous. It's like, hey, these guys are multiplying way too fast, way too fast, and I'm not going to be able to control them. So he slowly began to enslave them. 
And before you know it, the nation of God, the nation of Israel, started to become slaves of the Pharaoh. And at that point, guys would start wondering, did God keep his promise or not? How do we handle this? But then God had a plan, right? He had a plan, and I'm supposed to have a lot of quotes right here. I got here early, but look at all this, and I forgot why, why I came to get here early, get distracted, and So they became slaves. Pretend like I got shackles and chains up here. Okay? So they became slaves. Oh, there they are. I don't know. I don't know what Mr. Corey could have done with this, so it's somewhat away from me. But they were enslaved. How many of you guys think being a slave is fun? Anybody? Nope. Nope? Kind of like freedom? Yep. Kind of like doing what you want to do? You like it? All right, man. I'll ask your dad to I'll borrow you all next week. I've got plenty to do at the house. So they became slaves, right? And while they were being slaves, not only when you're a slave, you've got to do certain things. And uh, they had to build. That's what they did with slaves. They made them build a lot of buildings and, and or statues, whatever they may be. And back then, they didn't have all this fancy equipment. It had to be built with your own hands, muscles, and just time after time, right? And then it, was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. How many of you guys have ever worked in the outside of the yard with your parents? Y'all like it? No. Yes. No. Some people do, some people don't. I like, yeah. I like it, Bert. Well, I've learned to like it, let me say it that way. But there are times when I was doing, um, like having to lift a lot of heavy rock, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> And you look up back at those days, that's all it worked. There was huge bricks that they had to carry. A lot of times people lost their lives when they were working on these, uh, building these buildings. But the Pharaoh didn't care, right? But it was cool. Um, at least, you know, the, he fed them. You know, he was feeding them steak, Why feeding them meat, feeding them feed whatever, right? So, if I'm the Pharaoh and I'm feeding my slaves steak or, or meat, do you think the Pharaoh really cares about his slaves? No. Now, why was he feeding them meat? Why was he feeding them steaks? Keep them alive. Keep them alive. Keep them what, what else, right? Just give them the energy and the power to continue to build for them. So here are, he was feeding them steaks. And then, one day, So then one day I said, what's going on? Jesus said, hey, you know what? I'm tired. God said, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of my people being slave to the Pharaoh. That wasn't my intention. And as I was reading that and, and, and learning and just kind of thinking about it, I said, how do I relate that to my life? I, I like every time when I'm reading or, or I'm trying to study, how do, I, how do I make that part of my life? And I started thinking a lot of times when we're going through stages, or seasons in our lives and we begin to struggle the first thing we do is to begin to doubt we waver away from what, what God is and his promises to us we don't start concentrating on the positive things that things that are going on right in our lives we begin to focus so much on the bad things that we forget about our blessings And I think at that time, a lot of the Israelites have forgotten about God, to be honest with you. But then comes this guy named Moses. And there's so many story, uh, stories that go on in what we're talking about today. So if you have time to talk to your parents, say, hey, I want to learn more about Moses. You can spend time, a long time learning about Moses and his life. So Moses comes in, he comes in and frees all the slaves. Basically leads them, remember, parts of ocean and all that, so he, he frees them, and they get to away from the Pharaoh. So you would think they'll be excited that they will be happy, but no, we learn uh, quickly uh, on this verse, not only are they not happy, they begin to complain. 
I'm going to begin to say, Chase, read that for me out loud, though. The Israelites said to them, We wish the Lord had put us to death in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat. We ate all of the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert. You must want this entire community to die upon you. Exodus 15. So one thing, when you were a slave, they were probably complaining about being slaves. They get out of slavery and they have freedom. And instead of saying, hey, God, thank you so much. We're free. They begin to complain. At least over there we had steak, we had this, we had that. And we do that so often in our lives. Maybe you don't do it today as, as in your age, but as you get older, you start doing it more and more and more and more. You know, sometimes as, as, as you're waking up and, and you complain maybe about your breakfast that your mom just or dad just got up and cooked. Or maybe you complain about the clothes that they have set out for you or that you set out for yourself. Whatever that may be, begin to complain about those things. So they start saying, hey, where's my steak? Where's my meat? I'd much rather have been a slave and died as a slave than being free. And it doesn't stop, right? Just like Danny Downer wants to go down that trail, and that's how we're feeding our minds, and that's how we're feeding our souls. That's how you're going to concentrate on it. You're not going to look at your life and reflect and say, hey, this is positive right now. Right now, this is going on in my life. So they kept going. They kept going. And then they said this. The Lord spoke to Moses. Okay, so the Lord says, Hey, I hear you. I'm going to keep my promise. Let run. What does that say? Then the Lord spoke to Moses. He said, I will bring down bread from heaven to for you. But the people must go out each day. Have them gather enough bread for that day. Here, here is how I will put them to death. Put them to the test. I will see if they follow my way. God keeps answering even when we complain. Even when we are not satisfied, I guess, not content with our blessings. So you know what? All right, I hear you. Not only did I free you, but now I'm going to start providing bread for you. All right? I'm going to start providing food for you to eat. You would think that would be enough, right? You would think now, hey, I'm free. I got food. Good to go. What do we do from here? And they said, you know what? Nah, man, let's complain about something else. Let's find something else to complain about. I mean, think about it. They were getting bread. They were getting well at night. So, and in a sense, they had all the nutrition that they really needed. No, nah, let's complain about something else. What else did we complain about? Ask them, read that for me. As they continue to travel. 17.1 says what? The whole community. The whole community of Israel started out from the river of Jericho, traveled from place to place. Just as the Lord commanded, they camped at Rebim, but there was an angry watch for the people. Keep going, please. So they agreed with Moses. They said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why are you go, why are you arguing with me? Why are you praying to the Lord to So let's recap, guys. So here we are, right? That they're, they're they're being free to slavery. They're getting the bread. Healthy crackers, they're getting the bread, they get everything else, and they begin to complain about water. Right? I get it. We gotta have water. I'm sure there was probably not enough that they wanted. So God decided to strike a rock and give them water. The interesting thing is that they wandered and wandered and wandered a long time. And I honestly think it's because they lost focus. They forgot their purpose. Forgot 
to be content with what they had. They forgot that God ultimately provides. They forgot their focus on, the, on who to begin their energy from. How many of you guys look for towards your dinner times or your lunch times by show of hands? Who, who likes to eat? Who likes to eat? I mean, I love to eat. I love to eat, but what's, what, what we've got to start thinking about, guys, just, um, I don't have a Bible up here, but eating from the true bread, taking your time in the mornings, uh, lunch or afternoons or whatever time you want to quiet time, to eat, digest, and understand God's love for you, it's going to be more beneficial than your physical bread that we eat every day. Just, just, just like the Israelites back in those days. Our focus and we want in life gets turned around and we forget how to focus more on God. So we worry about our physical state versus our spiritual state so often. I'm challenging you guys to start thinking about it the other way. Let's think about our spiritual. The spiritual that we are in. The physical, he's going to provide. He's going to provide. So, we're going to come up here in just a minute. Um, we're going to do worship. One thing uh, that I've been worshiping and everything, and we'll do communion. We're breaking a small group. Take the time today in your small groups. Take the time. And write what is good in your life right now. Okay? One of the things that I'm, I'm going to start doing this week as, as I was being challenged through this, you know, a lot of people keep journals. Um, I'm not one to write. I'll just be transparent. Um, so this week I've kind of challenged myself before I go to bed or maybe in the morning to have to fully see, I've got to see what works the best. But before you either go to bed this week, or before you get up and start going, really before you go to bed, because you kind of reflect on the day. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. But you do whatever works for you. Think of three things, okay? One, in your small group, think of something good that's going on right now. But if you journal, if you keep notes, before you go to bed tonight, write three things that you're grateful for. Three things that you're grateful for, and do that every day. You know, it could be as easy as, hey, I woke up and sunshine was out this morning. It could be that simple. That thing's something to be grateful for. Hey, I got up this morning and I had clothes to wear. Forget about those things. Okay? If you're in fourth grade, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you next Sunday. Why those three things were that you were writing down. Coaches, y'all help me with this. Hold them accountable. Think about those things that you're grateful for. Because what we feed our brains, what we feed our souls, ultimately comes out. Okay? There's going to be things in our lives that are going to be tough. Okay? I'm not saying everything's going to be, oh, yeah, I'm so excited that this happened. No. Try to find the good things in life to look at. I'm going to pray and then we're going to go into worship. Father God, we just uh, thank you so much. We thank you for just uh, reminding us, Lord, that when you make a promise, you keep it. Father, we thank you so much uh, for just your overwhelming love that you have for us. You never desert us. Father, you always provide. Father, regardless of the situation, circumstances, and some of the bad choices that we make. None of that is separates us from your love. Sin does. But Father, thank God for grace. Father, let us just be reminded. Let us, within ourselves, think about three. Three little things that we're grateful for every day. Father, let us be content with what we have in our lives. Father, let us just uh, be 
Christ. Let's do this.